All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining our um, third webcast of the day. Uh, for those of you who have endured um, all three, congratulations to you. <clears throat> My voice uh, definitely feels like it's been a, a day, it feels like a trade show kind of day, so please uh, forgive me if it's sounding a little bit rough. I wanna thank you so much uh, for attending. Um, we'll do our very, very best to make this a great investment of your time. Um, hi, my name is Sean. I'm the owner of RSA Solutions and uh, just thrilled uh, to get this chance to uh, host this final and what I believe will be a really, really exciting webcast. I want to take just a couple of minutes and introduce you to um, some reformatting of our website, some great information that I believe will help you. And then I will introduce um, my friend and, and partner that um, will be doing the heavy lifting of the actual live presentation today. And so I'm really excited about that. Um, first of all, um, what you'll notice if you visit rsasolutions.com is that we've made a number of changes uh, to it. One is that we've moved all of the event related stuff right to the front page. Uh, so you'll be able to see uh, what happens once this slide deck is completed for today there will be new opportunities for you to be able to participate in educational events whether those are webcasts whether those are factory tours and yes we do intend fully in 2022 to be back into the mode of uh, bringing you uh, both live and virtual factory tours from some of our great customers so great place for you to see also, if you scroll down on the main page of this, you'll see that we have transformed the way that we are communicating information that I believe is cleaner and easier to be able to know how to get to what you want. So if you want to learn, for example, about planning and scheduling or purchasing an inventory or e-commerce or whatever that is, it gives you a very direct way to be able to get to that information. Today, we're talking about purchasing an inventory, so it'd be as simple as selecting on that and you'll see it. And I will do that in just a moment. However, I wanna introduce those of you based out of the United States to something that I think might bless you, just information for you to consider. I got to find this the hard way that uh, there was funding out because of the pandemic, because of the CARES Act program that I didn't know about and many customers haven't known about. And so I actually threw together a really simple webpage that I think you might find helpful. So directly under solutions, you will see that you can find employee retention credit. So what is this? Why would I take a moment to talk about it? Well, most, um, most customers have some W-2 employees. And if you do, that means that you could be in for a nice uh, treat. You may have heard that the SBA put out, well, actually coming from the CARES Act, programs such as PPP, in EIDL, but many or most don't know about ERC, which happens to be the third leg of the COVID-19 relief. And in ways, I think that it's actually better. Why would I say that? Well, PPP was great to get some funds, but the funds were restricted in how you use them, and you had to prove how you use them, else it was a loan. EIDL was great for the amount of money that you could get, but it was a loan, even though it was deferred, it was over a long period of time, and at a low interest rate, you still had to pay the money back. Here with ERC, it's a little bit different. You can qualify to get up to $26,000 per W-2 employee, and this is not just based on reduction of, of income like some of the others were. There is a number of ways to consider disruptions to your business. Could be materials disruptions, uh, or, or having to just do business in some interesting ways. And so here's my best advice. This is the, the tool for you. You'll notice that there's a self-qualify button. Just try to answer yes wherever you can, and you get automatically helped in the process of determining what this might do for you. Obviously, if you had <clears throat> a business with 100 employees, you can imagine what 26,000 per, or whatever number it is. Just wanted to introduce you that that is <clears throat> something that is available and you can find directly from our website. So here we are at planning and purchasing, and I'm just going to select on this. And so what you'll see is that it took you to the Planity web page. 
And so here, the message is intended to convey what is Planity? It is a purchasing and inventory system that happens to be connected to the leading CAD CAM systems in our industry, the cabinet visions, the micro vellums, the EMOSs, the cut rights, and I'm sure that there'll be more into the future. But it also is bi-directionally connected, tightly integrated with QuickBooks, which represents about 85% of our marketplace. So if you have QuickBooks Enterprise or want to move to QuickBooks Enterprise and you have any of those solutions, we can automate the process of extracting the bomb and then making all those transactions, the financial transactions happen within QuickBooks and also is integrated with Production Coach. So that makes it a really nice, um, makes it a really nice thing as well. And we need to update our graphic to also being integrated with planning assistant. So what, what is purchasing? What is inventory? So imagine that we consume the bomb coming from your CAD CAM system. So we know all the sheet stock, all the edge band, all the hardware, all the stuff uh, that we might need to be able to buy out. So what it would first do is to be able to help us see what we could allocate from inventory or the items that we need to purchase. And if we um, make a purchase order, then that is automatically created in QuickBooks. And so then we have the ability to receive against um, uh, what we ordered. So that's really nice inside of Planity, great features to be able to have not only QR codes for inventory locations, but to be able to create QR labels for the items that we're receiving so that they can be scanned in so that we know that we receive them and know um, that we can transfer them to locations and always know where everything is at all times. So that makes it really nice. Of course, that's communicated to, to QuickBooks and eventually those materials, some of those will get um, utilized in projects and so they can move, be moved into WIP or work in progress and eventually flush from inventory and of course communicated back to QuickBooks. So QuickBooks frankly isn't a very good inventory system, especially not for our industry and manufacturing. Uh, but we have a way to be able to do the heavy lifting and the linking between those systems. If you do visit our page, you can learn a little bit more about it. There's a number, a pretty large number of screenshots that are available for you of basic functions, as well as a number of videos that have been created for you. So I want to encourage you, just come to RSA Solutions and you're able to access it here um, from purchasing an inventory or by scrolling down and selecting on the purchasing and inventory selection of this. So hopefully that works out really nice um, for you today. So what I'm going to do is first of all, I'm going to help make my friend and partner a presenter. So he'll be able to share his screen. I want to take a moment to introduce you to Quentin. Uh, Quentin Petty is um, an awesome guy, someone that I have been um, in uh, business with for quite some time. He's helped me on a huge number of projects, and um, it's just always been a really great experience. And before the pandemic happened, we decided that we wanted to work on a project together that ends up being Planity. And what we saw was a really gap or a need. Um, for example, we were pretty focused on promoting production coach to companies and say, hey, we can help you ship back here. We can do all these things. And it became conversations like, yeah, but how can I ship 100% if I started production and didn't have any everything? Or, you know, I just don't have this visibility. So it became more and more evident that our industry had real need to be able to automate um, these processes of, of purchasing an inventory and having everything working in a really a connected way. So we set out and we architected and we developed and we worked through alpha and beta and came to this point where we have now a product for the industry that I'm really, really proud of. Uh, Quentin Petty is the owner of Techwood Manufacturing Solutions and um, just does a super amazing job, super smart guy. And I, I'm really thrilled and blessed to have him on today. Quentin, are you able to hear me? I see that you're muted. There you go. Ish. I sure can. I was trying to behave here. <laughs> That's not always easy. I'm glad. I'm glad you're in the takeover mode. My my voice and throat have about had it for uh, the day, but uh, look forward to it. We can see your screen and we can hear you nicely. So I'll let you uh, take it from here. 
Excellent. Thank you, Sean. Uh, thanks for the introduction. And uh, thank you to everybody who's taken some time out of the day to review with us. So um, without further ado, I'm going to jump right into it. Um, so Sean gave a kind of a high level on what Planet E is, basically the MRP solution. And um, in this little graphic, I'm just sharing that um, you know, the power of the product is leveraging, let's call them friendly solutions within the industry. So for example, Cabinet Vision is a friendly solution to us because it can provide a well-formed bill of material for us. And QuickBooks is a friendly solution because it can handle and is well developed for all of the accounting functions. So Planity tries to be the MRP solution and uh, kind of the glue between all of the systems. So I'm going to go ahead right away and open um, Planity and uh, just initially show you that um, we basically have a blank slate I just created in um, database that doesn't have much in it. This form is items to purchase and you'll see there are some items in here. We'll come back to those in a second. Um, and uh, back to the graphic, this engineering uh, solution try, um, provides for us a bill of material. And in general, we purchase off of that bill of material. So if I've told you that we have a blank database, why do I have items to purchase? So I'm going to show you two main passages um, that uh, the data will flow through. So we'll have inventory-based items and then project-based items. So you can see they're split over here. So that's why we have already some things in the system that I have this safety stock and it's basically promoting me to uh, create a purchase order even though I haven't imported any uh, demand. So I'm going to go ahead actually and uh, create some uh, purchase order suggestions. So at this point you can see there's no purchase orders. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and let the solution process that. So you can see it identified that it wants to create or suggesting one purchase order. Here's the three items on it, and it's for vendor B. So if I um, look at the items to purchase, you see the default vendor was vendor B. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. So just remember, we have one purchase order in here at the moment. So I had purposefully turned off the feature to um, import um, into the system. So I'm going to go ahead and enable that now. And this is being enabled for um, cabinet vision at the moment. So if I look at sales orders, there's no sales orders in here at the moment. But very shortly, actually, it, it arrived already. So it's found that cabinet vision has processed the project. And within that project, actually, it found a number of rooms. And within each of those rooms, it was able to identify a bill of material. So this list is uh, pretty long. It's basically exactly how Cabinet Vision in this case uh, created the bill of material and we import it as is. So this is the as is version and we call those engineering items. And eventually we create demand from those. Demand is what we actually plan against. So it's in this uh, stage, we can uh, convert things to be custom. And actually, in the background, it will generate um, individual um, items on the fly for those. Um, a side note, it did establish all of the, these are doors in this particular data set, and all of the dimensions for each of those doors. So I'm going to go ahead and just convert the end entire set to demands, but at this point I have just the kitchen selected. So I wanted to introduce a workbench that we have. So if you can pretend you're the engineer and you're all, all of the um, other engineers in your company are busy submitting um, orders, 
um, this form will collect all of those into one location so that you can manipulate all of the incoming bombs together. So I'm going to go ahead and transfer this to demand. Um, once it is a demand, then we can start planning against them. So a person might think then that I would see items to purchase here, which I don't. So the reason for that is that this system is managing all of the data with um, uh, status milestones, basically. So those sales orders so far are in demand review, and that's why I can't see them as available to purchase. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, update all of these and basically tell the system that these orders are firm, which means I've addressed any scheduling, which I didn't do, I skipped over that, and um, I've refined the bill of material, so I could have added bill of material or modified numbers. So now these are all firm, and now those are gonna start to become available for the purchase planning. So if I refresh this, um, these are project items. So these are the item types that would be purchased for each individual project, and they're not really kept in inventory. And you get to configure how you manage those items. The inventory items um, are based on a number of criteria before it makes a suggestion. So you can see in this short list, you have a suggestion of 15 for each of the items that's coming from a safety stock. Other things we consider is the demand, which is all of the bill of material we're receiving from, from engineering. Contribution is what we have on order and on hand is as it uh, as you imagine it might be, what is already on hand in inventory. So if I refresh this, it's now gone ahead and added to this list everything that was um, uh, brought in from cabinet vision in a summary form. So now we don't have you know, thousands of rows. It's identified here the vendors for those. And now you can see that the demand is showing. So this is the accumulated demand from all of those orders. Some of these have a combination of safety stock and demand, some are just purely demand, and you could have any combination of those in the system at any one point in time. So these should now be available um, for purchasing. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to, to the purchasing bench. So, so far we had just this one order and I think it's important to note that we're gonna add some things in here but not duplicate the order basically. So I'm gonna ask it to rethink about all of the um, proposed items to purchase. So now we've got three separate purchase order recommendations and of course I was very creative with the vendor names A, B and C. And um, in, in each of those, now we have the respective um, materials that are suggested to be purchased from them. So I'm gonna do another status change. And this one, I'm gonna set to approved and you'll see why in a moment. And um, these two I'm gonna mark as created, which is basically the step that says we're complete with them. The reason I did this one different is I do want to demonstrate a little bit um, the interaction with QuickBooks. So at this point in time, this data exists only inside of Planity. And I've got a button here that's only to help me demonstrate. So normally this would happen by changing the status. So I'm going to ask the system to take this and push it into uh, QuickBooks. So it's added some records here, some flags. So I can see that the purchase order with the purchase order number 51 was created into QuickBooks. So I have QuickBooks in the background and if I can 
navigate my way through here. So find all of them, I think it was vendor B. Okay, so there is one that's in here now for 51. So if I open that up, I can see those are the records from the purchase order, <clears throat> excuse me, inside of Planity. I'm gonna go ahead and close this um, purchase order for a moment. And um, I'm gonna reverse the status a little bit and uh, just make a change here so that you can see that we're actually tracking between the two applications. So if I select this purchase order, it's asking me to add so it recognizes we don't have something that exists. And this one that I just modified now is offering to update it in, Quick, in QuickBooks. So I changed this quantity to 300. Let's go ahead and allow it to update. It's confirming that it, it updated for me. So it was 51. So we can see now that the quantity is updated to 300 inside of uh, QuickBooks. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm just gonna update the status there. So at this point, we basically made our commitment. There are some reports and some uh, packets that we can generate with any attachments, et cetera, um, for the vendors, but at this point, um, the, the planning portion is complete. And I'm gonna switch over now and show a little bit from the shop floor side. And we actually use a, um, a different UI, it's a website. <clears throat> so we log into it with the same credentials. And uh, inside here, the shop floor, this is the main kind of workhorse of the application. So now we can start kind of um, reviewing what the user would experience on the shop floor. So at receiving, I think this vendor B is the one that I was uh, working with. So here's all of the items that I should expect um, on the um, purchase order. This first one I'm gonna do really simply and just basically receive everything. All right, so that's the process to receive um, a purchase order. Of course, I made the assumption that there were no exceptions. <clears throat> so actually, I'm gonna choose this vendor just as a shorter list for me to get through quickly. So <clears throat> in this example, I'm gonna show, um, for example, a shortage. So for this one here, Actually, how I would normally do this is assume that we're gonna receive everything, okay? And then you can go through and, ex and document anything that's an exception. So I was expecting to receive 52. Um, in this case, I'm gonna say, well, the vendor is sending us one short and uh, update that. So, Instead of uh, 52, we're gonna see 51. So we'll save the changes. And now it's remembering that we, we have one of these that we still expect um, to see from, from the vendor. We can then also uh, tell it that although these should be received, um, we're gonna close the, the purchase order out and we don't expect to actually get that. Okay, so... Um, Checking my notes really quickly. All right, so um, I didn't actually demonstrate, but there are locations that we received to. I didn't manipulate those because I just allowed the default to go through, but you can receive to any location in your system. Um, I'm gonna show cycle counting. And um, cycle counting starts by selecting the storage location that you're working at and similar to receiving, the general philosophy is that um, we start by assuming that everything is correct and then we can go through each of these and 
you know, update. So I'm going to say that uh, we actually only have 299 of those. And here um, we actually have 25 just so we can see a increase and a decrease. So that's what it looks like. Let's save those changes. And then now we have the corrected values inside of the inventory location. As we're processing, all of these transactions are being logged. So you can see the cycle count. So even if we didn't change the values, we still record it so that we know we, we did validate. And here you can see we were one short and we were one extra. And then all the receiving transactions as well. By the way, these are coordinated back to QuickBooks as well. All right, it, it may be helpful at times um, if you have an order in the system and you want to see where all of the related materials for that are, if you select on the order and this button here will give you, and it could be multiple locations, how much of a material and at which location um, they can be found. In this case, we just needed one of those. Um, the inventory can be transferred um, from one location to another, or it be, can be transferred from a location to WIP. And um, that can be done uh, with this workbench. Um, so actually, this is the location. Actually, I'm going to take a moment. I nearly forgot and uh, just review the fact that we can interact with a scan gun. So I'm going to generate a label really quickly for that location. So if you can pretend you're walking up to the location and you had the location uh, labeled. Sorry, I got to just organize the space a little bit. So Perhaps I was at this location. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, you can't see it, of course, but I'm going to scan that QR code on the right, and you can see that the that the um, location was updated. So I'll just do that once more. So we're at A201, and I'm going to scan on the right. And it recognized what I was doing with the scan gun and loaded this location for me. So we can either transfer from one location to another or transfer from a location into WIP. And we can uh, transfer partials or to make my life easy, I'm just going to go to all, which means that everything that identifies at the location, it's going to just transfer all of those. So I just grab a couple so that you can see the process. So again, that can be from location to location or location to, to web. So if I go back, um, the final um, inventory tracking step really is to consume the items from WIP against the um, against the order. Um, here you can see actually I transferred into WIP those uh, this top item over here. I need one of these. Um, this process would actually normally happen automatically based on status changes in production coach if you have it available. Um, so, but I'm going to just show it to you manually so that you can see the process basically. So um, I'm going to go ahead and there's 299 available. That's for all orders. I'm going to relieve just uh, um, one of these. So it's about to relieve one of those. So now it says it's consumed one and it was planned one, so everything is happy. There's zero. If I consumed extra, this will start going negative, which means I've consumed more than I planned. Okay, that's the end of the uh, the basic high level life cycle. Um, I did want to take a moment to just touch base on a few things that I think I skipped over a bit too quickly. Um, 
all through the application, you'll see notes and documents. Um, this is a opportunity for for you to attach to almost any entity a, a note, which is something you can type out, and then it's visible to anybody else downstream, or a document, which is a file that you want to attach. Um, which one do I want to sales order document? Okay, sounds good. And then these can be viewed by anybody else later on as well. And there's some rules that we can apply to who can see and who can modify, et cetera. But this basically just launches the de default application for those. So they kind of spread all through the software. Um, it's used heavily for when we do mark things as custom. So you can attach like an engineering drawing, et cetera. And then we can force, for example, at receiving that they cannot actually receive it unless they verify that they have looked at the attached drawing, if we want to go that far. Um, I also went uh, pretty quickly past um, the demand. So I just used the demand that came in from um, Cabinet Vision in this case, kind of as is, but it should be noted that um, the quantities can be adjusted. We can add additional demand. We can make demand ignored, meaning we just uh, disregard it basically. And we can add uh, again the, the, the notes and documents as we go. Once we mark them custom, they are tracked uh, with a little bit more um, resolution, I guess. And then um, when we receive them, etc they can be uh, kept separate from this, from the typical inventory. Um, there is a, a, a chat functionality. It's, it's a basic solution and anybody in the organization can chat back and forth. So I just sent a chat to only one other user, that's the shop user. So I just said hi and basically in the notification area on their machine, they would be notified that there is a message and then they can take a look at it and respond. You can have chats as groups. So if the uh, drilling operators want to have a group and keep in touch with each other, they can create their own group and communicate that way. Um, I also didn't show the item uh, setup or the item master. Um, this idea has item families, and then it, within each item family, there's um, items that we can manage, and um, there's all kinds of planning attributes that we can apply for those, safety stock, lead times, et cetera, et cetera. And this is all per vendor as well. Um, we can get a purchasing history. Actually, there's a purchasing we just did on it. We can track all of the uh, transactions so we can see everything that's happened with that item. Um, it's a vendor configuration and then again notes and documents. Um, there is a, a uh, somewhat simple location management so there's a hierarchy uh, just so that you can group uh, locations. Um, the last thing I think is uh, just to review that um, the the UI is customizable um, on the fly. So there's some simple things, for example, and this won't be realistic, but I'll, I have a long list here that is hard to read. So I could start to group things. So this is a single layer grouping, and then I, I could take, well, this wouldn't be realistic, but um, so within this, uh, all of this unit of measure, as an example, as the second grouping, so you can do those on the fly. You can reorganize where the columns are. You can manipulate columns. So uh, there's filters and there's, I guess that one was boring because there's not much. So you can start typing, you might be used to these in Excel or 
selecting with the checkboxes, or if you really need, you can build your own filter on the fly to get the data um, sorted the way that you would like. Um, these, all of these panels as well are configurable. So if I go here, you can see this is, can be pinned and unpinned. Um, you can take any of these panels and move them to a different location if you want to view it a different way, or you can leave it totally separate and go to a separate screen. If you have multiple monitors, you can break up the UI um, as you need, and that's within the um, within the panel, and then all of these panels as well can be separated separated out. So, Sean, I think that's what I had to review at a high level. I know it really sped through that pretty fast, but hopefully it, it uh, gave uh, a pretty high level view at Vanity. Yeah, no, thank you, Clinton. You did a great, great job. And we have some uh, questions that I think uh, are appropriate and would help us actually. Um, interesting, by the way, thanks, Kyle, because I was going to ask the same exact question. Um, when you consume the bomb data of cabinet vision, in this case, just as an example of data, what we didn't see was uh, you selecting um, things such as manufacturing start date. And so um, first, the question gets into two places. Number one, um, how do we set that? And then number two, if we do have a production coach planning assistant, um, how does the update in one system, how do you foresee that happening in the other? Yeah, so I apologize. Um, I mean, uh, yeah, I apologize. I guess I skipped over a lot of details, but um, this this is a scheduling workbench, and um, you can see we, we manage basically three time slots, uh, the delivery date, the production complete, and the production start. For purchasing this production start is key, and then we have some offsets, and we're able to off override, et cetera. I didn't actually change the, 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 the dates, but basically you could use this workbench here to change either one or multiple. Uh, the only thing I changed was the statuses. And um, when the, so this I'm showing you then is the manual version. So there's also an integration uh, with production coach, for example. I didn't actually show any of those workbenches. But here you can set up the statuses that you're looking for. And what happens then is um, we get the status update from production coach, and then that goes and changes the, the status here. So we do a map, basically, between the two. So if um, uh, you could have, for example, production complete, which and equate that to order complete here, or you could have shipped, and then we have a order shipped here as well. And then each of those status changes trigger things like relieving. So when order complete, we can set that as the trigger so that we automatically relieve the whip. As an, so I did it manually here. That's not typically how you would do it. It's, I just wanted to show it. Perfect. Put that off. Awesome. I think that yeah, no, I think that, that, I thought that's good. So we, we basically have the ability to um, designate a date that we want to begin in production. And so we know that we need to have items there before that date, and we can designate that date. And each item can also have its own lead time. So that's going to affect the demand and when purchase orders are created. So here's a really, really good question, something that I hadn't thought of. But I noticed in the data that you had that Cabinet Vision had created all of these, what I assume were buyout doors, uh, since we were going to be purchasing them. And so in Cabinet Vision, these were all kinds of unique different sizes. So am I right that those items literally didn't exist in QuickBooks? I mean, like maybe the, the door style or something, but you're creating a unique item in QuickBooks automatically from the Cabinet Vision data. Is that correct? 
Uh, so we create them in Planity on the fly. So actually when I started, and I should have shown this, these are the generic items from uh, Cabinet Vision, and there's a tool to map all of those. So we, you don't have to create these manually. It, we basically read the data in Cabinet Vision in this example, bring in all of the door styles that they have available, and then these combinations get created on the fly. So when we read the bill of material, if we identify that there's a new um, door style, dimension, and material combination, we, we create that on the fly in that import process so that users don't have to, it, it would be crazy to try and build um, all of these items ahead of time. So we use this placeholder so it's quick to set up, and then we use the incoming data to build it on the fly. Yeah, that's really awesome. I, I don't know of another system that can do what you've done there. That's really awesome. So here comes the question that, by the way, I've never asked you, and I don't know if we've accounted for, but I think it's a really smart question from Kyle. So let's say that, that I like for my materials to arrive, you know, let's call it five days before I'm going to start production. However, I might have some materials like these buyout doors that I actually want to receive let's say two weeks earlier, because I'm gonna to need to sand those and finish those. And so is it possible to have some items that should arrive earlier than other items for the same work order? So we, um, we manage a value that sits as a buffer value between the arrival and uh, from de so delivery from vendor and production start. So the is answer is, is yes. Okay, so that's per item. So for example, I could say I want my poles to show up five days before, but I want my buyout doors to show up three weeks before. That could be possible. Yes. Oh yes. wow, so there's actually a few ways to do it, but that is possible. Yes. Nice. Yeah, that's really good. That is really really good. And so on this sync question, so I, I got initially the order from uh, Cabinet Vision and Production Coach also got the data from Cabinet Vision um, to be able to do this, just different data. So we got the bomb and all that kind of stuff and they got parts and, and work and stuff. So let's say that, um, let's say that we have planning assistant that is scheduling our work and we see that something needs to change about it. So now, for example, the delivery date is changing in planning assistant. So I know that you popped open that screen of monitoring data. And so is it fair for me to say that that planning assistant could be the master and so then uh, Planity becomes the slave and updates the, um, the uh, status or the date status based on that one change or how does that work? Yeah, so we have this, this bench again is for handling orders and basically the statuses and the kind of the time frame. So this can either be manual or driven from production coach. Oh, nice. Nice, nice. Okay, um, question for you, please. And, and we'll probably make this the uh, last one um, for session. <clears throat> I'm getting to the point where I can't hardly <clears throat> talk. I hope it's been a good experience, but um, would you describe, like if someone says, yes, I want to go forward, I wanna implement Planity, what's that process look like for a customer? Okay, so, once we're confirmed, we first have to create a, an environment. So I didn't mention it, but this, all of this data is uh, stored in uh, SQL on Azure. So we first create that environment and we create some initial users and passwords and so on so they can access. And then we've got to do an install. The install literally takes 30 seconds and can be installed on as many machines as desired. Um, and um, then they can start using the software right away. Um, the web version, of course, is just a website. So this is a just a website, and I have it stored as an app on 
Microsoft Edge. That's what it looks like it does. The next step is, if I go back to this, in order for Planet D to work intelligently with these integrations, our next step is to um, synchronize all of that data, basically. And actually, I, I, I skipped over that. Uh, I do apologize. I'm going to take a, a brief moment just to share what that looks like. But basically, there's a workbench where we are relating the data between the different applications. And here is something that exists in Cabinet Vision. And we have it linked into Planity. And we can update how it relates the data. Here's a new entity. We can use it to create. So we can create an update between the two applications. So you don't have to go in Planity and type the thing out. So that would be the next step is get the data between all of your integrations connected up. And then the third and final phase is um, uh, working through the workflow, training users, um, and verifying that we have all of the connections correct. And at that point, then we kind of sanitize, sanitize the database and then they're ready to go live. Nice, thank you, thank you for that. I will, I will get to this one. I think that that's a, a good one to ask, just to make sure, because this is limited in the imports. You know, for example, the cabinet vision, the microvellum, you know, like we were displaying. And for those that also includes EMOS and WCAG CAM, you can find that right on our website. And it is limited to QuickBooks for the accounting side of it for at least the foreseeable future. And so the question was, uh, can Planity work with QuickBooks Online? And my answer is it needs to be QuickBooks Enterprise. Yes, the is desktop that, version. Yes. Yeah, the desktop version, which would be QuickBooks in a, Enterprise in order to do all of this integration. However, I would say this, it is possible to use Planity as a, you know, an inventory a manager that's not connected to a front end or a back end accounting to still be able to help you in some ways. But obviously, the biggest benefit you're going to get is when we have it connected both to the front and back end and be managing, you know, all the purchasing, all of the inventory, all of those things, including the financial transactions. So that is definitely good. Um, yep. It's go built to exist on its own, but these integrations, whichever they might be, enhance the experience, basically, and provide automation for a lot of the bulk entries. Absolutely. Well, Quentin, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to come on with us today. Obviously, as the whatever you might call the uh, chief architect or um, owner of, of Techwood Manufacturing Solutions, we couldn't have had someone better, more reliable to be able to help us understand um, what uh, Planity might be able to do for uh, businesses. So thank you. Thank you for doing that. Also, to everybody that attended today, I want to really thank you for uh, investing your time into learning about this amazing technology. And uh, again, this was just an educational um, experience. And so if it is something you're interested in, we can help you uh, from a um, sales, how to acquire, how to get implemented kind of side of it. But we really wanted to keep this educational only. So again, I thank you guys so much for being part of today's uh, webcast series. Uh, I don't know if we'll do another webcast uh, Wednesday with three sessions, or at least I won't, uh, I won't try to do all three of them so I don't sound gross, but I really do appreciate you guys being on. If for some reason we don't get a chance to communicate before, I want to wish you a Merry Christmas, a Happy Holidays, um, I'm really, really thankful. And for those of you who are already our customers, we just love you and appreciate you. And uh, you make us uh, who we are. So we thank you so much for that. With that said, I will dismiss everyone with a um, have an amazing, amazing blessed day. Take care and God bless.